Oh. <sighs> Mental health. Honestly, considering that you have your base needs covered, you have food, you have shelter, I think one of the hardest things in life is decisions. Like, to bulk or to cut? To have long hair or short hair? <laughs> First world problems. I sound like the definition of a girl who dyes your hair after every breakup. There's a lot harder things, but when I mean decisions, I'm more so pertaining to the tug of war, that push and pull in our minds of fighting between acceptance and like desire for more. We want to be in this place, but sometimes by setting ourselves these high ass standards, we're putting ourselves in a mental state of insecurity, of in an inadequacy. Things that I think a lot of people do often when they look at social media. We all just love social media. <laughs> I was listening to this Lex Friedman podcast. It's actually his most recent podcast. He's more so having an argument with his guest, Jonathan Haidt. Haidt? Jonathan Haidt? Haidt! Height nine about how he believes that social media does have power for good and for bad. We can definitely utilize it for good. And I totally agree with him. Whereas Jonathan Haidt, however, explains that social media is like a big root in destroying people's mental state, especially demographics such as girls between the age of 11 and 13 years old. Long story short, I get anxiety all the fucking time. I love how I don't have to be an engineer anymore, but I gotta tell you, when I was working a nine to five job, at least I could like, you know, go biking, I could go hiking, I could take time off, I could try not to be on social media, you know? I could like try to meditate off of these things. But when social media is your livelihood, that's why I live in San Diego and I don't live in LA, cause uh, <coughs> LA sucks. My least favorite thing when I was a kid was people who like, prided themselves on their status and thought they were better than others. And so that's why I was like, one day I'm gonna be fucking great and I'm gonna preach how that shit doesn't matter. But at the same time, I constantly want to engage with everybody and create cool relationships with the other people in the industry because it's like, I also kind of look up to them. I'm like, these people are sick because they're like doing other fitness stuff that I like to do. So how cool would it be and how fun would it be to do it with them? Now imagine you're working in like an engineering firm or like you're working with like Sikorsky helicopters and mechanical engineering, that's what I used to do. Uh, then you guys want to look at your sales numbers. How well is a certain part selling? The demographics of people that are using it. Well, in social media, you have those numbers too. Even though it really has nothing to do with your value as a human being. Especially if your morals align with your value being just a good fucking person. <laughs> Maybe that's why I don't have a girlfriend. Maybe you eat less protein. These no cow bars are fire. I used to be a fuck boy, bro. I think it's because I never got any love. If you don't get much affection as a child, do you like look for affection in your partners? Or are you okay without affection? I've heard if you're pretty independent as a child, independent from your parents and unattached from your parents, then you will likely be so in your partnership too. Probably explains why I was able to uh, deal with an open relationship. Looking at my old pics, it's low key embarrassing. Oh, uh, this is the best one for sure. <laughs> Went to the mall or something. This one's actually a sick pic. But yeah, most of these are just cringy as fuck. Oh, I'm so cringy. Cringy. I don't know what it is anymore, dude. Now I'm old enough to where I've just like, I feel like I've been there. I just feel grown up, you know? Like I've grown out of my fuckboy phase. I know I look like I'm 16 years old, <laughs> especially when I have this hair. Someone commented in one of my vi <laughs> Netflix colon. Yeah, this guy would be perfect to play as a 10th grader. Do I look like a 10th grader? <laughs> yeah, anyways. We're gaining size, baby. 176 pounds. Oh yeah. Your boy gained seven pounds on this bulk. <laughs> Let's go. I'm starting my cut and I'm ready to create some fucking sick shredded content. Some sick shredded content. <sighs> Pre workout. Social media gives me anxiety. I need coffee. It would probably be fun to like go to Dubai, lose an arm wrestle. There's a lot of amazing things, okay? There's a lot of amazing things that come with it. It's just mental health and the psychological aspect of it. Sometimes you just have those days where. You wake up in the morning and your shit's just 
pounding. In regards to my workouts, there's just workouts for you to try. So you don't get bored as shit. You have the progressive overload. Non-dairy creamer, so I don't stain my teeth black. Cause I like creating epic, sick montages. Like I'm like making my own art or my own music, you know? That if I really put in my heart and soul into it, could potentially propel others to feel the same motivation and drive that I do. I want to entice those emotions of like dopamine and drive in my my viewers. I want you guys to like like. I want you guys to like watch the video and just be like. All right, I'm fucking hitting the gym. Like, I'm going. I don't want people to watch it and then like feel insecure, which is why I just give you guys my full transparency, like that I am no longer natural. Cause I'm not that fucking crazy, amazing person. I'm not perfect. I don't have perfect genetics. Like maybe I have great shape insertions, but I've shown you guys pictures of my dad, my mom, and my entire family. Then you look at Chris Bumstead's family and his entire family of IFBB pros. But we all still put in the hard work. Just understand that everyone comes from somewhere different, you know? Now I have to make my meal too. General sauce, chicken salmon, baby. Mm. I really do think people just claiming everybody in the industry isn't natty is like ruining the hopes and the dreams and the drive and the motivation of a lot of kids these days because now they believe like oh now i need to take steroids in order to get there or now they're like enticed to take steroids and yeah there's a lot of people in the industry who don't talk about it just so they could have that little leg up it's like a lot of people competing in sports young la use code now for 15 percent off and it'll hella support me as well if you guys are suspicious of having low t then i would advise you guys get your blood work done and you can do so by clicking the link in my bio and they'll give you a full medical and professional analysis as well as medical advice and depending on how your blood work goes potentially get treatment for that they also have a new way to boost one's testosterone especially if it's under 300 nanograms per deciliter without having to jump on trt which includes hcg and enclomiphene before jumping into anything i would do your own research first as well as you can ask the medical professionals their science backed on this research but i think it's an amazing transformative experience for people to finally feel like their best selves. Okay, I'm gonna get ready for the gym. <laughs> it is like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. Fucking my ankles. You were shuffling, right? Yeah, I was I was uh, shuffling, you know, and I fucking, fucking shuffling on a bow. Okay, and then he, don't look at my leg, they're skinny right now. So, <laughs> now I can't hit leg day. <laughs> That's, That's What? <laughs> Emily's visiting for the first time. Bro, it's rip. We don't need these anymore. Yes. Game changer. Out of Walden's, bro. Literally came here for this airplane. <laughs> I bought eighteen dollars worth of apples. What the? Did not know that was gonna be eighteen bucks. Oh! Uh. I guess the moral of the story is that it's just super, super easy for us to compare ourselves. Say that there was no social media in the world we would still compare ourselves to our neighbor, right? I try to remind myself constantly every day is that we're all on our own journey. I think the least that we can do is just understand that we all come from somewhere different. If you're just trying to be better, then you just need to be better than yourself. Whatever it is that we do, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay! Thoughts on mental health, the comments below. I wanna talk to you. This is a pretty important topic to me, so I do really wanna see what you guys have to say. I just tell myself, self-love is important. And if I don't love myself, who the fuck will, you know? I have to look at my ego like it's another person. Sometimes I name it something else, like uh, Niley, little Niley Cyrus. And when he's freaking the fuck out, and he's hurt, I tell him, it's going to be okay. Look at where you started and look where you are now. Imagining that we were all one soul, one entity, one being, one God. Wouldn't you want the best for your neighbor? I know that's a hard thing to think coming from a competitive mindset, but in my opinion, that's us building mental strength. That's us being stronger than our egos. Mm -hmm. Thanks for hanging out with me, y'all. Like, comment, and subscribe. Sick ass shorts. Let me know what all you guys would like to see. I might start traveling. I might go to Marbella and see my buddy Matt McNabb. And we might like hang out with some other influencers that are in Europe. Love you guys. Stay swell.